Yeah, ladies and gentlemen, a very warm welcome to Semicon's machine building shop. Here we produce high pimps coating machines, like what you see standing behind me, three of them. High pimps is a fascinating technology which brought fully new things to cutting tool coatings. It really brought technology to a new level. And the thing I would like to discuss with you today is 12 micrometer PVD coatings. An achievement fully new, totally new thing in cutting tool coatings. And I would like to show you a little bit why we are doing it, how we are doing it, and how it's made. Well, in the final end, it's about an application. A coating machine is always just a tool to do something to make a cutting tool better for a certain application. And what you are seeing here in the slide is a typical heavy duty application, milling of railway tracks. Railway tracks need a certain shape so that you have a smooth ride with the train over the track. And this not just only when you're producing new tracks, also during the use of the railway, you have to recondition the tracks continuously uh, to have the same profile all the time and to have the same running conditions all the time. So that's a very nice application for a cutting tool maker because, well, you see very many inserts on a wheel and you can imagine this is a very rough environment. The thing, the, the boogie is traveling over the tracks and while it's traveling, it's milling. So very harsh environment, very high forces, and of course it's milling, it's interrupted cutting. And well, it's, it's known for a long time that in heavy duty milling, lifetime of the object of the cutting tool is more or less linear to the coating thickness. So we would like to have as much thickness as possible, especially in such an application where we ideally would like to go through one shift of working, and then we stop and then we can recondition the inserts. So we are looking for thickness. And this brings us to the point that with traditional technologies, high coating thickness is an issue. So what is so difficult in making a coating thicker? At a first glance, you would say, take any of the machines, like standing in the background of me, put the inserts in, make the coating time simply long enough, and then you will end up with, for example, 12 micron. Well, we all know that intrinsic stresses in the coating is an issue, and that coatings which are too thick tend to have too much stress, and that you see peeling and spallation. You might now uh, say, well, let's go for a CVD furnace. In a CVD furnace is 12 micron coating thickness, something which is done for decades. Well, in CVD, we use a very high coating temperature. And this means when we are cooling down after the batch, the coating itself and the substrate shrinks at a different speed. This means we always have tensile stress. Well, tensile stress is okay for turning, but for the shown milling application, tensile stress is no option. So we have to go for PVD. What I'm showing you here is a typical image of a cutting edge of an insert after coating with traditional technology with high coating thickness. You see delamination, or you see even on the right hand side an open cutting edge. You see down to the substrate, typical image from an arc coating. So obviously, the stress of these technologies is so high that you can't keep the coating there where you need it most on the cutting edge. So we have to find something else. Uh, and one of the big points in favor of high pimps is high pimps coatings have smaller grains. The very intensive bombardment of the growing film with ionized species helps us a lot to make the grain smaller. Smaller grains in a given volume or a given coating layer brings us to a higher toughness of the film. And this is a real step ahead because it brings us away from this old discussion about just making coatings harder, working on the edge, brings us to the discussion about H over E. When we are going to mechanics, uh, in mechanics, the sustainability of a material is always discussed with hardness over Young's modulus. So a good relation between hardness and toughness. And that's one of the key points why high pimps is a very good candidate for high thickness, smaller grains, finer grains. 
And the other thing is a very continuous morphology. We don't have any voids like droplets or other things, what you will find in traditional coatings in the film. Anyhow, 12 micron is still thick. And this brings us into the technology of HIPIMS. What is going to happen in a pulse? For a long time, people have just taken a look in what's going to happen on the evaporator itself when I'm applying the pulse power. Of course, that's important because there we are generating the species in the final end building up the coating. What we did here in Semicon is that we took a close look in what really arrives at the substrate where we have placed the objects. And the interesting thing is that you can separate this into three phases. In the first phase, after starting the pulse, you just see gas ions. High PIMS is in the final end sputtering. Okay, we need them to generate material, but they are not helping us. In the second phase, after the flight time from the cathode down to the table, you see the metal ions. The metal ions, that's the reason why we are doing high PIMS. High PIMS is sputtering with ionized metal. That's what we want. In the third phase, when the pulse is almost over, you see that the plasma is dominated again by gas ions. Simply, we have the gas in the chamber and the species coming from the target collide with the gas and ionize the gas. And these ones, this third portion, is highly ionized and also would like to go into the grid of the coating. And unfortunately, these species are not going on vacancies, but they are going anywhere in the grid. And these ones make the stress. So we have to find a way to suppress them. And that's the basic idea behind what we call selective iron biasing. Gives the designer of the coating some kind of a scissor, define when we would like to start with the bias and when we would like to end. So by designing and defining this delay before we start the pulse on the bias and defining how long the bias gate is open, you can effectively suppress the gas. And the only remaining thing is the metal ions coming from the target. Uh, and this is the fully new thing. You now have a tool for actively managing intrinsic stresses in the coating without working with other things like table bias, what you need for getting a good adhesion of the material. So one of the key achievements in HIPIMS is we give you, the designer of the coating, additional parameters to work on to manage intrinsic stresses independently from any other parameters of the coating. And this is one of the very big points that help us to make a coating as thick as 12 micron. Yeah, a very nice image for managing stress is a bridge. Well, here, this bridge built 1600 something. These people were very smart. They were aware a bridge is made for carrying vertical loads when someone is traveling or walking over the bridge, what you're seeing here in the vertical row. But for doing this, the shape of the bow and the angle of the cornerstone of the bridge is outermost important. So obviously, you can work with intrinsic stresses when you manage them in the right way. Then you can use them here in the example of the bridge to bring a vertical load down in the foundation. And this is exactly what we are doing with selective iron biasing in the coating, build up the coating in a way uh, that we have the right stress level at a low compressive stress, which is good enough to make the coating thick. Yeah, a very typical example for this is what I'm showing here in the image, an internal threading insert for oil and gas tubes. You can easily imagine an oil and gas tube is something like this. Uh, and for bringing them together, for getting them down on the oil rig, you need quite a heavy thread. So this is again a typical heavy duty application uh, in the cutting tool industry. And you can nicely see here on the image, 15 micron coating on such a geometry, which is of course pointed because we are making a thread. And you still see a quite nice Rockwell image. Um, just some stellar cracks, which is very good for uh, such a very thick coating. And the other thing what you see is high pimps is sputtering. So we have a nice coating all around the cutting edges. 
So also the quality of the thread is quite nice. Yeah, a cutting result here from an application in China with a typical APKT milling insert. Uh, you know from the geometry, it's an insert like this, where we are bending the coating around 270 degrees, which makes it even harder for a thick coating to stay on the edge. And what the people were doing here in a typical C45 carbon steel, the task was give me as much lifetime as possible, so make it as thick as possible. And the advantage you are seeing here in the Ferrocon Quattro is just due to the enormously high thickness of 12 micrometer. It's not about composition, it's not about other features in the coating, it's just the capability of making it so thick that you have so much wear volume in this heavy duty milling application. Yeah, you might now say, well, heavy duty milling is a nice thing, but my my company is doing something very different. I'm in the micro tooling business. Okay, very different application. And what I'm showing here is a super micro tool, a PCB drill for drilling in computer boards, or here I'm showing a board from a telephone. 5G technology is one of the coming things and will consume lots of cutting tools. The interesting thing from the mechanics and stress-wise, it's the same thing whether we do on an insert a very thick coating or whether we take a super micro drill like here with a very sharp edge and we apply a coating of let's say 1.5 or 2 micron. So also here it's very beneficial when you get down the stress in the coating to low compressive stress levels. And you see also here in the SEM image of the PCB drill also here the primary and the secondary cutting edge is nicely coated, no voids, no defects to the cutting edge, clearly indicating that this stress management is obviously working quite nice. So, we talked about the special morphology of high pims coatings and the achievement of 12 micron. Now it's about the point, how do we bring this into a coater, into coating hardware? And when we started here with the CC800 high pims, we made it right from the beginning, the HyPIMS machine, and we took into account HyPIMS is about pulse energy. Transporting pulse energy should not be done over any cable, because every cable uh, at a high frequency, at pulsation, gives inductive and capacitive losses. So what ends up at the evaporator is different when it comes out of the power supply. And that's the reason why we put the pulse units here right into the side door of the chamber with an extremely short distance to the evaporators here in the chamber and the same thing for the table supply. The table supply for the dedicated high pins is right under the vacuum chamber with a direct connection through a rotary feed through to the table. So all the energy is going over very short distances between power supply and table and this is the key argument why we bring the full power into the process and why we can achieve a coating rate as much as two micrometer per hour. Yeah, a cutting tool producer needs markets and we already saw the example of PCB drills for the 3C industry. Another example what you see here is a fitness variable and on the other hand an interesting market is medical. Both markets are characterized by micro tools, very small features in the objects to be machined, and both are looking for a perfect surface of the object after machining. So also here comes HyPIMS into the picture. HyPIMS is sputtering, so we have no droplets, we have a smooth surface, and the dense HyPIMS coating is very well suited for stainless steel, for the telephone industry, or when it comes to medical implants for chromium cobalt. So another good thing where the dense high pims coatings can help us to bring new markets. Yeah, we talked about the application, we talked about the process, let's come to a conclusion. Coating technology started with alloyed coatings, then people turned to multi-layers. In multi-layers the idea was to combine properties of certain things, and of course to find a workaround uh, to bring down stress in traditional processes. The good thing about high pims is small grains, 
fine grains, a dense morphology, and low stress in the coating itself. And this brings you, the coating designer, a fully new starting point for exciting new developments. Yeah, ladies and gentlemen, I hope I could show you a little bit how we make 12 micron coatings thicker than everything else in traditional coating worlds with high pims, and this, that this technology overcomes traditional barriers. Typically, coating is limited to four or five micron. Now we can go up to 12 because we can manage stress actively. That's a fully new thing, and you are all invited to test this technology, to come to us, to see it, and of course, I'm more than happy to, all, to answer all your questions. Thanks for your attention.